I'd like to say shalom, brothers and sisters. I'd like to first start off by giving all praises to the Most High God. In the name of His Son, our anointed Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord's willing, the Most High is willing, I'm going to attempt to do a lesson um, dealing with shaving, getting haircuts, and so forth. Dealing with the hair, facial hair, the head. Okay, I'm going to start <clears throat> this lesson in Psalms 89, verse 34. It says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. So the Most High God says, His covenant will he not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of his lips. He will not change, brothers and sisters. There's no variableness in the Most High God. Okay, um... From there, <clears throat> I'm going to Deuteronomy chapter 5, because he says, His covenant will he not break, nor alter the thing that went out of his lips. Deuteronomy 5 and 1 says, And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep them and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Herod. So who did the Most High God make that covenant with? The Israelites. And it says that the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day that you may learn them and keep and do them. So we had to do these laws. Verse 4. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. So, <clears throat> who did the Most High God give, make the covenant with? The Israelites. Who did he speak to? The Israelites. What did he speak? He spoke laws to them. So, now let's go to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Dealing with getting haircuts. Leviticus 19, verse 27. It says here, Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. So the scripture says, ye shall not round the corners of your heads. What are the corners of your heads? You have corners here. You have corners here. The Bible says, ye shall not round them. Okay. So if you see a brother or a brother got his hair taped up, trimmed up, and around here is round because when I used to get haircuts, the barber used to ask me before, "Do you want the back round or square?" So it says, "You shall not round the corners of your heads." So if you see a a brother with his head taped up like that, that's going against this scripture right here, as we can see. That is going against this scripture, brothers and sisters. I mean, we can't deny that. It says you shall not round the corners of your head. And if a brother has his hair taped up, he's, he's, he's dealing with the corners of his head. Let's read on. It says, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. <clears throat> okay. The word mar means to destroy. You shall not r destroy the corners of your beard. So your beard has corners also. You have corners here. You have inside corners. You have corners here. You have different corners on your beards. You know, some people's beards are grown differently. But the Bible says, Ye shall not destroy the corners of your beard either. Now let's go to Leviticus 21, verse 5. See if anything changed. Leviticus 21, 5 says, They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Now, it's saying the same thing, just using different wording. It says, they shall not make baldness upon their head. Okay. Let's ask ourselves a question. What does it mean to make baldness upon your head? Well, if you go to the barber and, or you get a razor or clippers, whatever instrument you, you choose to use, and you shave off all the hair of your head, the barber says you shall not do that. Okay. If you go to the barber and he give you a, <clears throat> a fade, and he bald the sides. You know how they bald the sides, then they, you know, leave it however they leave the top. Whether it's low or high or 
box top, high top, fade, however it goes, and they ball aside, the Bible, the Bible says we shall not make baldness upon our heads. Brothers and sisters, that's against the law. And brothers teach that. Brothers out in the streets, they teach, no, you can't do that. You have to have a beard, and you have to have your hair. You can't cause baldness upon it. Well, another thing that the brothers do, I see some brothers, they teach that you can't do that, but then you'll notice that they had a haircut. And, well, the Bible, Bible says, you shall not make baldness upon their head. Meaning that if you go and get a tape up and they trim around the edges, any piece of that hair that you cut off or you had that barber cut off, you made that to happen. The Bible says you are not to do that. That's what the scripture says. We can read it inwards, outwards, backwards, forwards. It said the same thing. It says they shall not make baldness upon their head. So if you get a tape, you're making that to happen to your head. Now what's the opposite side of that. Let's read Leviticus, I believe it's chapter 13 verse 40 it says and the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bald yet he is clean so it says the man whose hair is fallen off his head he is bald, yet he is clean. Leviticus 21 5 says, They shall not make baldness upon the head. We can't make baldness upon our head. But if it's fallen, it's because the Most High had it to fall off. That's why in Matthew it tells you that every, you know, the, every strand of our hair is numbered. The Most High caused it to fall off. If we are clean, let's read the next verse in Leviticus 13 verse 41. And he that hath his hair fallen, from off the part of his head toward his face, he is forehead bald, yet he is clean. So if your hairline is receding, the Bible says you're clean. There's no scripture say if you go and get a tape up, you trim it up, you're clean. There ain't no scripture to tell you that. That's leaning on our own understanding because <clears throat> what does the scripture say? Let's read it. Um, Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 5. Verse 21, it says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. The Bible says prove all things, hold fast that which is good. The scripture says the law is good, so it's hold fast to the law, but prove all things. Well, how do you prove all things? Let's read. Um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 18. Excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. So we, the scripture says to prove all things. And now it's saying if any man speak, let him speak according to the Bible, the oracles of God. Let him speak with wisdom. You know, because I've heard it said that, oh, you can, you can trim up your beard but you can't cut into the natural hairline. Okay, we can run with that, but prove all things. Show me in the scripture where it says something about a natural hairline. You cannot cut into the natural hairline. It says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. You have to prove it in the scriptures, brothers and sisters. If you're not bringing scriptures to prove these things, we have to question that. We have to question that if you're not bringing scriptures to prove these things. There's no scripture to tell you you can't cut into the natural hairline. Because when you hear people that say that, you look at their hair, it's taped up. They have it trimmed up. Have it, they have baldness going around their head. So they're going to go with scriptures and try to justify what they're doing. Brothers and sisters, we have to deal with only scriptures as it is written. If you can't prove it in the Bible, we shouldn't deal with it. We shouldn't speak it because it says here in Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, I believe. It says, Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments 
and shall teach man so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So the scripture says, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach man so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> and from there, let's go to Peter, the James. Matter of fact, let me finish and let me finish read Matthew 5, 19. It says, the second part says, But whosoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So whosoever shall do these commandments and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now let's read James chapter 2, verse 10. James chapter 2, verse 10 says, Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So it says, you keep all the laws, you're keeping the laws, but you offend in one point. Scripture says you're guilty of all of them. It's just like you broke all the laws. If you, you're keeping the laws, you keep the Sabbath day, you're wearing the fringes, you keep the holy days, the high holy days, you're doing everything. But now, you don't eat the pork, conch shrimp, lobster, but you want to tape your hair, so you taping your hair. The Bible say, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Verse 12, it says, So speak ye, and so do, as they shall be judged by the law of liberty. So it says, To speak ye, and so do, because we're going to be judged by this law. We're going to be judged by this law, brothers and sisters. We can't take chances of just we want to look a certain way because why do people get their hair taped up? Why do they tape up their beards and their hair and so forth? Let's go and read. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. It's lust that does that. Because we lust to, work a, to look a certain way, so we'll go to the barber and get a haircut. Because I was sitting at an event, and they had someone cutting hair at the, at the, at the event. I'm sitting there and like, this ain't, this ain't right. <laughs> you know, because, you know, we as Israelites, we are the example for the nations. We need to go in the scriptures and look at our forefathers, because it says here, <clears throat> let's read it, it says, um, matter of fact, what I want to get is something else. Let's go to Hebrews real quick. Because it says in um, James chapter 5, chapter 2, verse 10, I think chapter 2, verse 12 says, we're going to be judged by this law of liberty, so let's, let's speak ye and do. Okay. Hebrews 10, verse 30 says, For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It says that the Lord shall judge his people. But we need to understand this. He's, it's going to be judgment, but the judgment is going to be in the world to come in the new kingdom when it's going to be some that's going to be called at least in the kingdom of heaven and some that's going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But judgments are also today. We're going to get judgments today from this. Let's read um, 2nd Ezra chapter 7 in the Apocrypha. 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 56 it says for while we lived and committed iniquity we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death so while we lived and committed iniquity which is sin it says we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death okay now let's read here <clears throat> We're going to begin to suffer for it after death, but we're dealing with this time also. What are some of the judgments this time with getting a haircut? Because that's what this subject is about. This is, um, you can look it up on the internet, blackdoctor.org. 
and the, is dealing with hepatitis risk found at barbershops and nail salons. I'm going to read a part of it. It says, the risk of transmission of infectious disease, particularly hepatitis B and C in personal care settings is significantly understudied in the United States. He added, the evaluation of hepatitis infection risks among patients in nail salons and barbershops prompted by a reported case of acute hepatitis C that was clearly related to a manicure or pedicure treatment, Johnson said. The disease which causes swelling of the liver is serious and sometimes lasts a lifetime. So it says that <clears throat> The transmission of hepatitis B and C is significantly, significantly understudied in the United States. And it says this disease causes swelling of the liver and sometimes it lasts a lifetime. Brothers and sisters, this is judgment today from getting haircuts. See, just because, think about this, you go get a haircut. Say somebody in that line has some kind of blood disorder. Could be AIDS, could be any blood disorder. And the barber cut him, draw blood. The barber not concerned about, well, I need to sanitize this, these clippers or this razor. His thing is, I need to get to that next person. I got five people waiting, and I need to get all these heads. I need to get that money. So now that blood is transformed, transferred, from one patient to the next. You know it is, brothers. Because you, you sit there in barbershops, brothers and sisters know this, and we see, we get cut. And the only thing you do is put some alcohol in and keep it moving. But then he gonna cut somebody else, and now you got diseases, blood disorders are transferred. Say if you got a barber that do go to a solution and dip the clippers in there to clean them. Well, once you use that solution the first time, isn't that solution contaminated at that time? It's contaminated, brothers and sisters. See, there's a God. We can't get away from his judgments. We have to apply these laws. We have to apply these laws, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> okay, from there, let's get some examples in the Bible. I'm going to 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 24. Excuse me. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 24. Because these are scriptures people use to try to say, this is why I shave, or I, I can trim up and tape up. 2 Samuel 19, 24 says, And Mephibosheth, Sheth, the son of Saul came down to meet the king and had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came in peace. So the scripture says that Saul's son, he came to meet the king, but he hadn't trimmed his beard. <clears throat> but what does it mean to trim your beard? Because I know with my beard, if I let my beard grow two, three months, it's going to grow uneven because first thing is this part here the first the front part here would grow more than the back part back here it grows uneven so <clears throat> excuse me so what do i do i trim it i get clippers or i get the scissors and trim it but i never allow those things to cut into my skin to cut my hair that close to the skin but i do trim it and that's all it's talking about. It's not talking about this, this, he hadn't got a tape. Because we don't see scriptures dealing with tapes, with, with shape-ups, with edging. We don't see that in the scriptures. Because scriptures say we shall not cause baldness upon our heads. <clears throat> so it says this the son of Saul hadn't trimmed his beard. Now let's go from there. Let's go to um, 2 Samuel chapter 14. Verse 26, it says, And when he pulled his head 
for it was at every year's end that he pulled, pulled it, because the hair was heavy on him. Therefore he pulled it. He weighed his, he weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. So we see right here, this is dealing with Absalom, David's son. His hair was so long and heavy that he pulled it. What does it mean to pull your hair? All it means to do is to cut it. But not to cut it off, not shaving it. Let's go to that. Let's go to um, Ezekiel. Let's explain it. Because remember the scripture says, prove all things and speak as the oracles of God. Ezekiel <clears throat> chapter 44, verse 20. Neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. So it's telling you what pole is. It's cutting your hair. It says, neither shall they shave off their, shave their heads. You couldn't shave it, but you couldn't allow your locks to grow long, but you shall pole it, meaning that's in between. You can cut it, but you can't take it all the way off. Okay, from there, Let's go to um, 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 4. 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 4, it says, Wherefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks and sent them away. So we see that David sent his servants to, you know, um, to another another king, because it's the son of a king who had died, and this king, the king's son, had cut off half of their beards. So verse five it says, when they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. So we see that it was a shame for these men to have their beards shaved, half of their beards cut off. It was a shame, brothers and sisters. Our forefathers were ashamed of having part of their beard cut off. So David told them, Remain in Jericho until your beard be grown, and then come back. Brothers and sisters, the scripture says here, let me jump to this real quick. Romans 15 verse 4, it says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. All these things were written aforetime were written for our learning. We see here that <clears throat> that David, his servants, were ashamed to have half their beard cut off. If you go and, if you just got a little bit going on around here and got it cut up under there, by the time you tally it up, it's probably half your beard gone. But we have no shame. Because it looks a certain way. We like the way it looks. Because all it is is lust, brothers and sisters. According to the scriptures, we can't do that. <clears throat> okay, from there. Let's go to... Um, let's deal with a couple ways in the scriptures where it was okay to have your hair shaved off. Let's go to Numbers chapter 8. Numbers chapter 8 verse 7. Verse 5. I'm starting at 5. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the children of Israel, and cleanse them. And thus shalt thou do unto them to cleanse them. Sprinkle water of purification upon them and let them shave all their flesh and let their clothes and let them wash their clothes 
so make themselves clean. It was a way of cleansing, brothers and sisters. For the Levites to cleanse, <coughs> they shaved off all their flesh. Okay, from there, let's go to, um, I believe it's Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6. Verse 2, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to a vow, to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord. So it's dealing with someone vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves unto the Lord. Verse 5, all the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in the which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. So the scripture says, no razor can come upon your head. But notice that key it put in there, he shall be holy. No razor can come upon his head, brothers and sisters. <laughs> wow. And the scriptures, let's read that scripture one more time. It says, In all the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days be fulfilled in which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy, and shall let the locks of, his, of the hair of his head grow. See, you couldn't shave, brothers and sisters. Now let's go... Jump down to verse 13. It says, number 6, verse 13. And this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the tabernacle of the congregation. So this is the law when the end of his separation, because he vowed that vow for a, length, a certain length of time. And when that time is up now, this is the the law of the Nazarite when the days of the separation are fulfilled. Verse 18, number 6 and 18. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall take the hair of the head of his separation and put it in the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offering. So at the end of his sac of his, of his um vow he shaved his head well where in the bible does it give us an example of that let's jump at the acts <clears throat> acts chapter 28 verse 17 and it came to pass that after three days paul called the chief of the jews together and when they were come together he said unto them Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. See, Paul say, I have not committed anything against the people nor the customs of our fathers, the laws. He has said, I have never committed anything against that. Let's jump to... um. Acts chapter, I believe it's 24, verse 14. This is Paul again. It says, But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. So Paul says, he believed all things written in the law and the prophets. So Paul's taking us back to the Old Testament. From there, let's go to Acts chapter 18, verse 18. Because remember, I recently just read about the vow of a Nazarite. <clears throat> Acts chapter 18, verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence to Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centuria, 
for he had a vow. Now this vow sounds like this vow could have been a vow of Nazarite because he had a vow and he shaved his head. When we read that the Nazarites did that. So Paul shaved his head at the end of this vow. We read those things. Paul say, I, I believe everything written in the law of the prophet, law and the prophets. Paul said in chapter 28, Acts 28, verse 17 says, I have committed nothing against the customs of the fathers. So we see that Paul kept these laws. Now let's go back to, um, <coughs> excuse me. I want to go back um, to Leviticus. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. Not Numbers, but I believe it's Leviticus. Okay, Leviticus chapter 14, verse 2. It says, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. So now we're dealing with someone with leprosy that's been cleansed. Someone that has leprosy and it says, Leviticus 14.2 says, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. Verse 8. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and shall wash himself in water that he may be clean. And after that, he shall come into the camp and, sh and shall tarry about and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. So we see now that someone that has leprosy and they were cleansed, they had to shave off all his hair. Well, where did they get an account of that? Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped, worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, can thou can thou canst make me clean and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying I will be thou clean and immediately his leprosy was cleansed and Jesus said unto him see thou tell no man but go thy way show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them so we see that this is a man that Christ cleansed from leprosy well, he had sacrifices like turtle doves and different things he had to give to the priests, but he also had to shave all his hair because he was cleansed. So we, we read that in Leviticus 14, verse 8. So, see, that there, there were instances when you could shave to be cleansed. <clears throat> um... Let's go to Job and read another instance. Job chapter 1, verse 20. And it says here, let's read Job chapter 1, verse 1 first. It says, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. So he was perfect and upright. It says that he he feared God and he eschewed evil. Job kept the laws of God. Now let's jump to verse 20. Job 1 and 20 says, This is dealing after Satan, well, God attacked him through Satan. Because Satan was at this time tempting Job. <clears throat> and he is right after you read this, his sons and daughters were killed. Verse 20 says, Then Job arose and read his mantle and shaved his head and fell down on the ground and worshipped. See, there were instances that you're reading right here when Job was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Let me find it. Sorry about that, brothers and sisters. In the sign of mourning, when we were mourning, we see that Job 
shaved his head. And with that, I'm going to read here in this Bible dictionary. It's called the Nelson New Illustration Bible Dictionary. I want to read something out here real quick. It says, shaving, this is page 1157. It says, shaving, removal of the beard or other body hair with a razor among the Israelites, beards were common. It says shaving, let me start again, shaving, removal of